Oh my god. Did I finally find the perfect filming setup? I think I'm at like 40 videos now, maybe. And each one of them has different video quality because I'm struggling to find the right combination of camera and lighting and area to record. And it turns out it was just the wall in my room this whole time. Hello, my name is Deneen and welcome back to my channel. I assume that you've been here because um, I'm a very small viewership, so I assume the only people that see my videos are people who are already following me. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Silk Heavy Whipping Cream. Now, I found this at Walmart and I was super excited about it. Not gonna lie, super excited. I'm someone who really likes vegan swaps, like exact swaps. I know not everyone is like that, but for me, being able to buy something like this rather than spending who knows how much on raw cashews just to make sauces that shouldn't be super expensive in the first place, I feel like um, it's not something that I like to do as a vegan. I like to eat cashews. I don't like to, you know, make expensive sauces out of them. So um, when I saw this on the shelf, I was thinking, oh, this would be perfect for sauces and, and you know, whatever you use heavy whipping cream for. And so, and you know, the first thing I thought when I saw it was, oh, but wait, it's gonna be really starchy, isn't it? Because a lot of these uh, uh, vegan swaps are super starchy and they don't act the way they're supposed to. And then I looked at the ingredients and I was like, okay, nothing in here, you know, nothing in this, let me see, can I focus? Can I focus? Can you focus? I guess not. So I'll just read some of the ingredients. Actually, I can read all of them because the ingredient list is really short. So, filtered water, coconut oil, sunflower oil, faba bean protein, guar gum, sunflower... Why was that the one that I struggle with? Sunflower less lecithin, and natural flavors. And that's it. No sugar, zero gram... Is it going to show you what you see? Zero grams of sugar, zero grams of carbs. So, okay, because, you know, the second thing, the first thing is that these things are usually really starchy and weird. Second thing is these things are usually sugary. They usually have sugar, so you can't use them for savory dishes. Zero grams of sugar. I was so happy. You don't, you don't know how happy I was when I saw these. And I think I had gotten the email about it from Silk, like, the day before. And usually when that happens for me, that means that I'm not going to see it on, in the store for at least a few months. And we went to Walmart and we were passing by. I was going to go get my soy milk. And then I saw this. And I was so excited. I grabbed it and then I put it in the fridge and it stayed there for a very long time. And I almost forgot about it. And it's almost expired. So I figured now would be the time to go ahead and do the video <laughs> while I can still eat it. Um, and I'm so glad. Okay, so I'm sure you can tell by the way I'm gushing that it's a good product and that I like it. It's a very good product and I like it. I have used this twice so far. The first time I used it, I made some coffee and I used the heavy whipping cream to make like a, a whipped creamy um, filling, I mean, t topping. I was kind of wanting it to, um, to, to act like a cappuccino. And so I was hoping it would kind of melt in, um, but it was actually more like a macchiato. It was, it was just really good. It was really good. Um, like a coffee macchiato because I don't have an espresso machine. But um, it turned out really good. Boyfriend liked it. Um, it whips up really nicely and it gets really thick. That was another thing I was worried about. I was thinking, well, you know, it's going to whip, but it's going to take forever to whip up. You know, it's going to be one of those things where I'm just going to have to have a, you know, it's standing mixer. Um, to, to mix and no, I used my little coffee frother, my little handheld cheap electric coffee frother from Amazon and it took like a couple of minutes. It was really fast and it got to the point where the cream was so thick that the coffee thro frother was struggling to get through the cream. It, it stopped and I almost thought it died and then I took it out and got cream everywhere. But um, so yeah, it turned out really good. If, if you were going to use this um, the way that I did though, I would recommend adding your sweetener to the whip, not to the coffee, because again, this has no sugar, which is awesome because you get to control what kind of sweetener and how much sweetener you want to put in it. And I love that. So I use, you know, the non-sugar, um, like I use sugar substitutes, right? So um, I like being able to add them to my, to my, ingredients to my dishes so i had it with coffee and it was really good but most things with coffee are good and i was very curious to see what it would be like in a savory dish so i made a a, a pot of um, cream spinach and 
it was very good it turned out really nice the texture of this stuff is so nice it's like silky like silk it's like silk and smooth and creamy and it doesn't have a super strong flavor as a matter of fact all you really taste is like the lightest hint of coconut oil that's it it doesn't have a lot of taste and so it just adds the body the thickness the richness that you want from heavy cream and without depositing any kind of weird flavor that you know sometimes the substitutes have which we get used to but in this case you don't have to get used to anything except maybe mild coconut oil which if most of us most of us vegans are plant-based um or people who use a lot of substitutes we're probably used to coconut being in everything right so that's fine i think that the only you know if i if i could have them change anything about the product the only thing that i would have them change was that i would ask that maybe they use like the refined or deodorized or whatever they call it the coconut oil that doesn't have much of a smell or taste but i'm not complaining because it's so mild it's not like you put this in your dish and now it tastes like coconut it's it's kind of like you taste it when you taste this by itself or when you use it kind of like as a solo ingredient like I did on top of my coffee. But in the cream spinach that I make that I made, you cannot taste it at all. So I'm just gonna insert some footage of me making that cream spinach. I used this heavy whipping cream. I wanted to um the recipe that I found was not vegan and I just veganized it. So I used um it asked for milk, but I didn't have any um, soy milk that was unsweetened. So I used instead the unsweetened K Khalifa Farms um, kefir yogurt or kefir yogurt. And that works very well in cooking as a milk substitute. I'm sure it kills the probiotics, but it, I just needed a white, thick, milky substance. So I put that in there along with some garlic powder, salt. What else did I use? The vegan butter, spinach, of course, the... Um, vegan cream cheese from Kroger, which is very good. And that may have been it, a cayenne pepper, I think cayenne pepper, and that may have been it. And it turned out really nice. It was so good. It was amazing. Um, it's funny because my boyfriend doesn't like creamed spinach. He, he hates the texture, he can't stand it. But that stuff to me was so good. It tastes like spon uh, spanakofita, spanakofita, is that how you say it? The Greek spinach pastry that I used to love eating. Um, it tastes like that and it was very good. So this stuff is a very a very good, versatile, inexpensive product. Very inexpensive. I'm surprised at how inexpensive it is. And like you can just use it for anything. So anything that you can think of that you used for heavy whipping cream in the past, I imagine you'd be able to use this. And I feel like I used a lot of it, but it's still pretty heavy. It's still pretty full. I used it to make two basically large coffees and an entire pan, which you've seen, an entire large skillet of um, creamed spinach. And I still have so much left. So I'm really excited about this product. I'm, this is gonna be a regular in my household because again, I mentioned I started um, vegan keto in, in an attempt to help with my PCOS and insulin resistance. And so I need a lot of fat. And so this is mostly fat, <laughs> no sugar, no carbs. So this is perfect for me. Um, Again, I don't, I don't have any cons except that I just wish that it didn't taste like coconut, but it's something that the flavor is so easily hidden that's not even really a con. I got, and again, I got this from Walmart, so I'm, I'm super excited with the selection that Walmart has now because Walmart is basically the most readily available store to people. So some people, the only real grocery store they have, depending on where they are, is Walmart. So I hope that this is available to people in other places too, because that would be so cool. You know, for the vegans that are, I, I'm in a few vegan Facebook groups, and a lot of them are always talking about how, man, I wish I could have these products, man, I, I wish I could have that product. You know, this is never in my grocery store. These are the only vegan products that are, you know, available in my grocery store. Usually the typical follow your heart stuff is really all that they can find and sometimes Almond Breeze. And so I'm, I hope that they can find this. I think that'd be so cool for people to try it. The next way that I wanna try it is as they show it on the package. I just wanna whip this up with some berries and I think that'd be really good. Or even peaches. No, I can't, I don't, I don't even know if I, I think peaches might be too high carb by sugar, but berries, I have a lot of berries. I think that'd be really good to try it and a great way to use this up. And I'm very excited, as you can tell, very, very excited about this. So I'm going to go because I think at this point I'm rambling, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it helpful. I hope you were able to try this product. I hope it's in your stores. Try Walmart before you try anywhere else. It was right next to the regular um, heavy whipping cream under the milk. On a side note, 
I love that they're doing that for us. I love that they're putting it in places they're realizing that a majority of the people who buy vegan products are actually not vegans. So putting it in the vegan aisle might make the sales actually drop, mean, we, meaning we might have less access to the stuff. So I love that they have it out there to be sold and to be you know, incorporated in, mo in more people's diets. But at the same time, grocery, hunt and grocery shopping is starting to feel more like a scavenger hunt again than it used to. <laughs> like, you know, when you, and you go vegan, um, or at least when I went vegan, all the vegan stuff was in the vegan section. So it's like I went to the vegetables in the vegan section and then I could leave. Whereas now it's like, oh, I have to go all the way over there to the milk. I, it's first world problems. I'm complaining about having access to a lot of food. Anyway, again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like the setup and I hope my phone actually keeps this file and it's not corrupt. If you see this video then i have found the perfect setup and from now on this should be how my videos look so thank you so much for watching bye stop recording <laughs>